back to Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White, joined by my co-host Kevin Hinks. But let's bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment, and that's going to be Megan Brantley, Vice President of Research at Likefolio. Thanks for being here, Megan. Thanks for having me, guys. Happy uh, Monday. Yeah, happy Monday to you, too. Uh, so we got Uber, Lyft. We're talking ride shares. It seems like I've been taking some Ubers recently, and they've come down in price. Is that going to help as far as sentiment data goes where, you know, Three months ago, four months ago, I was getting in an Uber going two miles and paying 40 bucks. Uh, it's come down pretty significantly, even though gas prices are still elevated. What kind of data are you seeing ahead of their uh, earnings here? Yeah, so whenever we look at Uber, you know, a lot of times we look at Uber and Lyft just to kind of understand how these companies are comparing um, potentially against each other. And we see from a ride hailing perspective, just across the board, those mentions are staying higher this summer. They're up by about 44% year over year, just, you know, overall mentions of consumers who are talking about, you know, using a ride share service. And we saw this really increase in spring. And so it's, it's good to see this pace hold um, into these summer months. And a lot of that, like you said, it has to do with, you know, improved availability for ride sharing services and also those improved prices. We see mentions kind of working in a positive direction for both companies. When we look at Uber and Lyft and those overall levels of consumer happiness, um, they're both increasing by about 5% each. So I think that, you know, that's something consistent across the board that both companies are doing. But this chart, I think, is really telling because this shows that when it comes to mind share, Uber is kind of the first thought from a consumer perspective, the first place people are checking whenever they're looking for that rideshare service. Uber mentions just dominate Lyft um, comparatively. But when you think about overall consumer happiness level, the two are pretty even. Um, Uber's consumer happiness is about 52% positive. Lyft is about 51% positive. But when you look at the overwhelming domination of mentions from Uber, the, the fact that Uber's ride sharing, um, that consumer happiness level is actually now a point higher than Lyft, I think is pretty significant. It shows that the company is at least doing some things right because this wasn't necessarily always the case. You know, For a while, mm -hmm. we were watching Lyft um, outperform when it came to consumer happiness levels. And now that's kind of switched alongside this, you know, this commanding of market share for Uber. So at least from a ride sharing perspective and what we're looking at, we see continued strength as people, you know, continue spending spending on experiences. You know, they're going to concerts, they're going to sporting events and just overall travel in general, you know, leisure travel and also business travel. You know, these things, you know, taking taking flights, flying for work, um, flying for vacation, a lot of these require Ubers or require lifts and um, so, you know, so that's a nice tailwind for both of these companies. And at least from a ride sharing perspective, we see Uber with a slight edge over Lyft here. OK, Megan, let's get into this now, because this company, they do ride sharing, they do delivery, they do mobility, they move things and people from one place to another. And you're right. They're very that name is now iconic, right, in moving things but they don't make money. They still don't make money. They didn't make money when they're charging the high prices. Now Tom's saying the prices are coming down. They still don't make money. Now their cash burn is less, so we appreciate that. And you know, I, it dawned on me, Megan, and I wanna know if you have any data to support this. When I read about what mobility is, they actually hook up truck drivers with shippers and they match up their goods and rides, right? And so, and it dawned on me, Megan, is it the app? Is the app their secret to being profitable and just stop getting into these other businesses that all lose money? Shouldn't they be like a visa and just provide the app for all these people to hook up and let them all do their own thing? Isn't, is the app the most important part of Uber? Yeah, you know, I think that Uber's long-term goal is to create this ecosystem so a consumer or a user can go to this app and get whatever thing or whether it's themselves that they're transporting, whether it's a meal they're transporting, whether they're hooking up logistics behind the scenes, you know, all of these things, whether it's last mile delivery, you know, Uber wants to be that, that go-to shop. And I think this is really where Uber distinguishes itself and elevates itself above Lyft. Um, you know, the other piece of consumer facing data that we can look at or, you know, signs that we see of Uber trying to doing this, too, is its investment in food delivery. You know, this was 
a really big, you know, check in the pro column for Uber during the pandemic, whenever people were, you know, getting food delivered and things like that. Now, as we see things flattening out, we actually, you know, from a from a brand perspective, when we break down, you know, Uber Eats versus Postmates, which Uber owns, versus DoorDash versus Grubhub, we see Uber losing steam here. We have, I think Uber Eats mentions are down something like 10% year over year. Um, Postmates mentions are down over 40% year over year. Meanwhile, DoorDash is growing year over year, and we actually see Grubhub got a nice boost from that Amazon partnership. So. We see this, you know, at least from a consumer perspective, Uber's idea of we're going to get you in our app and we're going to be really sticky because we provide these food delivery services, we provide these ridership services. We don't really see that taking hold yet. But to your point, I do think that that is the key and that's the critical, you know, turning point to their long term successes to get that stickiness, to get that loyalty, because their um, their services that they're providing are just better than others and they make it easier for for anyone to move things or themselves from point A to point B. Yeah, and to Kevin's point, Megan, you know, par portions of their business don't make money, right? The Uber Eats, the Uber yeah. Freight, none of that's, you know, uh, conducive to their top and bottom lines at this point. And I don't know if they ever will be because the company keeps on saying that they need driverless cars to eventually turn, you know, a, a, a recurring type of profit. But you mentioned the happiness here. I was surprised at that also where Uber's kind of taken a little bit from Lyft at this point. Is that due to maybe the number of people that are using Uber as opposed to Uber being a better experience in Lyft? Is, is that, does that key into any of your data? You know, that, that's, that's a good point, but I think that really Uber is providing a better experience for its riders. We're also seeing, you know, we're listening for mentions from drivers as well, and we are seeing signs that Uber is providing a little bit more support to its drivers than it previously had. I think even its CEO came out and said, you know, maybe we put the cart in front of the horse a little bit with our all of our talk about, you know, driverless vehicles, which I think that they're still investing in, but now they're saying, you know, we do need to invest in our drivers as well because they realize that, you know, they need these drivers right now. They need availability. When somebody, you know, calls an Uber or hails an Uber, you want one available in your area, and that's really important. And so Uber's taking steps to, you know, support its drivers at least short term. So that I think is contributing to its happiness as well. And I think that's partially why, you know, users are reporting a better experience because Uber is able to recruit these higher quality drivers. Yeah, I pick which one's cheaper when I use uh, the rideshare, <laughs> and that's all I care about at this point because, uh, you know, both services are decent. Uh, but if you have a mega, uh, if you have an earning score for these two going in uh, to their quarterly results here, Megan. You know, I, I wish that I could give you guys some really significant edge here, but we actually have Uber at a negative one, and we have Lyft at a negative eleven. And I think that Uber's outperformance is really driven by that outperformance in ride sharing, with um, food delivery being a potential weakness heading into this report. All right, so basically neutral uh, according yeah. to uh, your data. All right, great stuff as always, Megan. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. You too. All right, that's Megan Brantley, Vice President of Research at Likefolio, helping us break down the data. Now, Kevin, she.